Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life Channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you with hope. Today, our afterlife guest for our session is the wrestler China. So I'm going to invite her in. I didn't actually look her up, so I don't know what her real name is, so to speak. So I'm just going to call her China. All right, so to have her come in. And I felt her this morning, like when I was um, washing my face and teeth brushing and the whole thing, I felt her around and I've been wanting to channel her and connect with her for a while, especially since I've been channeling some inspiring women in the afterlife. I thought, you know, I want to connect with her. I feel like she may have a story that is something that her, the perception of who she was and who she really was as a person is different. And I think that maybe perhaps she was someone that could potentially have been misunderstood. I don't follow the WWE stuff or the SmackDown stuff or the wrestling federation stuff. I don't follow that. I do know that she was a professional wrestler. That's what I know. And so, and she kind of reminds me of Wonder Woman, you know, the long black hair, long dark hair and really strong, that kind of a thing. So I feel like you, China, have had a, oh, okay, so this a minute. Wow, there's a lot of stuff here. I feel like there's a son, a young man in her life. I feel it in my heart, like right in my heart space. Like all of a sudden I feel this just big ball of grief right there. So I don't know if there was a, a boy that died or a child that died, but I feel like there's a son a boy involved here. He may have, he may, she, she may feel the grief like there's a separation, like either he wasn't with her or he has to live without her. There's some kind of sadness about that child, mom child relationship. Wow, I didn't expect that. That's not what I felt when I initially kind of felt your energy. I felt you like a very strong woman, someone who was a trailblazer in the work that you did or in the genre that you did. Like, it feels like you are one of the first well-known women wrestlers, like that you opened up that whole area for other women. And that to me feels like a trailblazer. Would you agree with that? And then she says, well, someone had to do it. And then she's referring to somebody else before her, somebody with blonde hair, really puffy blonde hair, like 1980s puffy blonde hair. I don't know who that was. And then she's saying Charlotte someone. There's a Charlotte or Char somebody. And then she's referring to somebody named Gail, which might be in her family. Just so you know, I can see um, there's a mother figure, also mom. I can feel mom. Uh, She's making me feel like there's uh, substance abuse around her in her family or around her, around her. She's saying around her, around her. I can't tell who, her family doesn't look, it's not really clear. Like it looks um, disjointed at best and it looks as though family is um, complicated. She says complicated. Like I'm not sure if she had an estranged relationship with her mom or her dad, but one of the parents is not directly connected. And so either that means that they're in, they were in the afterlife first, or it means that it might be a situation where she didn't know her dad or where she was taken away from someone. No, I don't think it was taken away. Or it was a situation where like she has a step stepdad or blended families or something like that. Um, she's showing me a really pivotal time in her life between the time that she was 15 and 16. She also shows me that she dealt with a lot of trauma in her life for herself, like emotional trauma. She's showing emotional trauma or a lot of emotional intensity and trauma. Now that doesn't necessarily mean someone inflicted something upon China as a child, but it means that she is expressing to me that she had a lot of emotional trauma. Uh, and it's not just turmoil, but it's like very painful, like warlike energy emotionally at 15 to 16, very pivotal. And then at 17, it looks like she maybe went on a path that wasn't healthy for her. So I don't know what that means specifically, but she's talking about being in survival mode and that she really feels like she 
um, she's trying not to judge herself. Like she's not looking back over her life and giving like a, a kind of a, a critical eye to it, but she's just sharing it. Um, there's a lot of, of like, I almost feel like rebellious because I don't, like people don't get me, I don't fit in necessarily. I have to take care of myself. I have to do what I need to do to survive and take care of myself. I feel like there's a young child. I don't know if she had a kid young or what the deal is with that, but I feel like a young child, unless she's identifying with that young child that's like, I'm on my own, I have to take care of myself, like single parent kind of an energy is how it feels. That's how it feels, you guys. I'm just expressing what she shares with me in this heart space energy, which is clairsentience. It's a gift of clairsentience sensing feeling which many of you have as well right doing my best to share it's not always literal you guys I'm interpreting all right okay so and she's not making excuses that's really clear she's like I own my stuff and she uses the word she uses a swear word that starts with an s she's like I own my stuff okay editing it a little for YouTube and for me, I'm an idiot. But she's strong and she's got grit, I would say. She's like courageous, but she's got grit. Like she has this, she can't, like failure's not an option for her. It's not an option. She has to keep picking herself up. It looks like, it looks like she gets knocked down or has had a lot of places, times in her life when she's experienced like crushing emotions or crushing circumstances, feelings, and her emotions get the best of her. And she just really struggles internally to try to maintain um, a good, positive, strong attitude. And she's been beaten down a lot, it feels like. And to have to crawl your way back up, it, it's tough and you gotta do what you need to do to survive. But she's like, she's in that mentality, that survival mentality, she says. and you don't want to be a victim. You don't want to be a victim. You can't be a victim of your circumstances or whatever you're dealing with or of other people at the hand of other people. You can't be a victim, can't be a victim. It's like she's running from being afraid of being a victim. Like she's running from that is how it feels to me. And she, I totally have permission to share this in this context, the emotion of it, because she's sharing a lot of the emotion of it. And there's anger there and there's regret and resentment, uh, regret, regret, remorse. There's grief and regret. Grief and regret are the closest energies of that. Okay, and she shows me a lot of red around her. I don't know if her colors were red, but there's a lot of red. And I, in fact, I was looking, I was like, I don't have anything red. The closest I have is burgundy. She goes, oh, it's fine, it's fine. Red and black, that's what I see like black leather and then red. And I feel like she's showing me, she's trying to ex describe to me kind of the history of how things evolved as a wrestler kind of a thing, where the organizations that she belonged to, there was one organization, I guess, and then they separated, and then there was different factions, almost like political parties is how I feel like it is, but like different sides, and like you had to pick a side, and she wasn't sure. It's was almost like a buyout or a merger, and then a, or a, it's almost like, it's almost like when um, companies are owned and then somebody gets more stock than the other, and then they own the controlling shares of the company, and so, not really a takeover, but kind of. That's what she's showing me. There's all this um, conflict, and then there's this big organization, and then this conflict, so then it kind of merges, it kind of breaks off into two, and then almost like another part tries to like kind of come out of that, like a third one, something new was started, but it wasn't successful, so that, that died off, and there was a lot of um, people picking sides, and your friends, like everybody changed. Like you weren't sure who you could trust, she says. You weren't sure who you could really trust. And who had your best interest at heart? She's like, you gotta look out for yourself. You gotta know that in the business. She said in the business, whether it's wrestling or acting or music or whatever, she says, so, well, you're a performer. She says, you're a performer, that's what you are. And she says, you gotta look out for yourself. She's talking about having an agent and having to change agents at some point. And something about where does your allegiance lie? like that she was challenged um, to try to not decide which, she was trying to, um, she feels like she has really strong opinions, but then at the same time, uh, like she could be volatile, like temper wise, but at the same time also very rational. Um, 
I feel like her business was mismanaged, though. I feel like her money was mismanaged. I'm going to say that. Um, again, I don't know you guys stuff about her, so probably some of you are screaming at the video at this point, especially if you're a wrestling fan and you know China, then and her legacy, uh, she feels like she was a trailblazer. So I'm gonna, I totally honor her for that, and I'm not judging her in any way, shape, or form. She's a strong woman, and. I can feel it's not easy to be a woman in a man's world like that and she made it easier for others but it doesn't look like that like she's not like all warm and fuzzy like hey let me help you out she's like hey I need more women in here so I can fight with them <laughs> you know so I could be more um, successful and more famous too and it feels like she um, it does, I want to share this with you too, because I, if it's okay, China, right, that we talked about this just briefly, like when I was getting ready um, to do this channeling, I, it was pretty clear to me that she had had some kind of an eating disorder or problems with food. And I don't know if it was like a binge and purge thing or if she struggled with her weight, like her life, and that's a thing for her or what it was but she is showing me that she definitely had a, a disorder an eating disorder unhealthy um, food relationship with food is she's showing me that and that might be public I don't know but that's what she's showing me she's also showing me taking um, um, drugs that are not legal and I don't know if that was to help her hormonally or if it was to help her like like because she's like a bodybuilder you know to build up muscles or if it was other things i don't know but I, i'm seeing like shots like in the arm um which kind of thinks maybe thinks like steroids but i don't know if women do that but she i can see it in the arm and then she's showing me a big tattoo i don't know what it means but it almost looks like a, a triangle or a shield or something like a tattoo i think it's a tattoo either that or it's something that hangs off like a jacket that she had or a um it kind of shows her rank or something I don't know or a um, it reminds me of a patch like you'd see like a sergeant and then you know with the the chevrons kind of thing um, for my service or something I don't know it looks like a badge but I think it's on her shoulder I mean it could be a buckle maybe I'm seeing one of the um, you know how they have uh, like belts and things maybe I'm seeing that that could be but it looks like it's got like little triangles pointing down like chevrons pointing down it looks like a shield that's what it looks like and I don't know if when you win a title or something you get like something on a jacket or there's like um, memorabilia that's created but she's showing me that for some reason I see that and it's got black on it and it's yellow or gold I can see that yellowish goldish something like that and she's showing me I've had titles I've had many titles she's saying and like especially tag team like with two people I think it's called tag team when they do that right see you guys I don't know wrestling stuff um two people and then she shows me three though like there's three of them I don't know what that's about three ladies I don't know what that's about interesting um and one of them shorter than her smaller than her and one of them is like dark hair and one of them is blonde or um, okay so I'm not sure what that's about and she's showing me um, getting into products like selling stuff like I don't know if it's vitamins or protein shakes or whatever but I see her doing something like that like starting kind of having like a business where she is either the face of something promoting something or trying to create a business for herself and so I, then I got two random pieces of information. See, this is like if I'm having a session with you and we're talking to somebody in the afterlife, when I get random pieces of information, I just say them to you because they could mean something for you. Whereas I have no idea what they mean. I just got two random pieces of information from China, the wrestler that we're channeling or talking to right now, but I don't know what they mean. So maybe you do. You might be able to put that in the comments, but the two things are one, there's a dog. There's a dog. She's making me feel like there's a dog. So. I don't know if she like was big in animals or you know she had a dog there's a dog and then she's showing me um, and then I hear the word scar so I don't know if there's the dog's name was scar or if scar is something like she has a big scar that everybody knows about and it's like a whole thing and it's like this badge of honor I don't know so dog and scar if you know either one of those things and how they fit go ahead and put them in the comments below see you guys this is a great opportunity to share with you that when you talk to a psychic or medium it is a interactive experience where we get information 
and for me, because I'm so clairvoyant and I see things, I will get kind of random pictures or pieces of information during the session. And if I don't share that, if I just keep that to myself, it could be something really important for you that I don't understand what it means. And it doesn't matter if I understand what it means because I'm just the person that's sharing the message. You are the receiver of the message. So it's for you. And that's how you are engaged and active in your own psychic connection experience. You are the one that is the perceiver, the receiver, and you get to use your own discernment. You discern what information and how it fits, what information fits for you and what doesn't. And if it doesn't, just say it doesn't. Just set it aside, that kind of thing. All right, All right, China. So is there anything that you feel like you would like to share surrounding your departure, your death, moment of death, or your point of departure from your human experience? It was sudden. I feel like there's a heart thing. Um, I'm feeling like it's an accidental heart thing but I'm not sure. I feel like she has some complicated health problems and it looks like her body is not happy with her. Like I literally feel like she must, she may have been living with some kind of an autoimmune thing that wasn't diagnosed or public, like uh, almost not an MS, but something where it's like things are swollen in the body and it's really not comfortable. It kind of feels fibromyalgia or autoimmune kind of type of a thing, but that may not have been public. So I feel like she was dealing with something. She was not healthy in general in regards to the body, but, but you can live managing a disease or managing a, a, a disorder or something that your body is inflicted with. You could totally live a healthy life like that. But I'm feeling like, so I don't feel like her death was directly related to that, but I feel like it may have contributed to point of death. I feel like it's a heart, like a heart attack or something. The heart stops working. And, and, it kinda, and, and then I hear the word accidental. So I don't know what that means. And so I don't know, I don't know. I don't know the facts about it. I, you better bet I'm gonna look it up after though, cause I'm curious now, of course. But you know, you guys know, if you watch Above Life channel, when I channel, I don't Google, that's your job. If you want Google, you do that, you don't watch Above Life channel. I need to share what's pure and what I see, okay? And that's what I see. That's what I see. Remember, clairvoyant, see. Okay. All right. Is there anything that you would like to share about your life or your legacy that we could share with the viewers? Hmm. She says, I think you could learn from my life. She says, I think, I think um, people could learn more about self-love and I think there's a lot of people that feel like they have to do everything on their own. They're alone and they're on their own. Even when you're with people, even when you're in a marriage or in a family, you just have, some people just have this, it's like you're born with this feeling of I'm on my own, I'm, I'm alone. and. It's not so much about proving yourself, it's about freeing yourself. Really being able to see how great you are, your greatness, but the way that I went about it in my life was not necessarily the right way. You don't need to have challenges to overcome to prove your strength and your, your loyalty, your commitment, you don't have to really prove anything and usually what the audience is is yourself like you're trying to prove something to yourself or you're trying to save yourself and that's not that's not how life's supposed to be it's not supposed to be a bunch of a bunch of um big matches you know a bunch of big fights it's not it's not, it's not supposed to have to, it doesn't have to be that way. And uh, I think if I was going to leave a message, it would be self-love. It would be really self-love, which might sound kind of odd from me. When you look at the whole compilation of my life and my lessons, I think it's important. 
to say that, and that's, that's the truth. That's the truth as I see it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for that. All right, you guys. So this is Bridget with Above Life Channel. You've been watching a channeling session with China, the wrestler, in the afterlife. Every week I share videos with new and sometimes familiar uh, guests in the afterlife. And the purpose has always been to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope so that you can live your life. So remember, this is your life. This is your life. So live it. Just live it. Thanks for watching.